I'm going to keep it reasonably high level and I'll give you a glimpse based upon certain principles. And the first principle is that every communication which happens on internet is an opportunity. Okay. I don't want to talk about ethics of information. Let's keep that to European Union. Okay. Only every communication which happens on internet is an opportunity. Okay. A subset of that is actually a profitable opportunity. Okay. Everything which I'm going to say over here will be based upon product which has already been designed or a paper which I've written and, and it's already in the public sphere. So let's start with the philosophy. I fundamentally feel that communication in India is potent if we as Indians feel that if required, we will help an another Indian. Okay. I also feel that in a decade or so, a universal language will appear which will connect humans with machines and anything in between, which is surrogates, avatars or something like that. Hence, I believe in this fundamental postulate or hypothesis that machines will become integral part of our lives. I also believe that zero intelligent machines or compute will emerge. It is already emerging with the advent of architecture cloud where the compute costs have gone down. Hence, very soon, we will actually develop based upon few tech, mostly nanotech and neural science, zero intelligent machine. And you can combine those machines to create source of intelligence. When I first heard about Nirbhaya, I never used to live in India, okay? For the next two years, it bothered me so much that me along with one professor and eight students, we actually wrote a paper and now a platform, which basically is such a simple platform to write. And the premise is that in a democracy, in a young democracy like India, if you can connect movable machines, with people who use social media, then you can do remarkable communication. And that kind of communication can make an impact, more than an impact which is a marketing or a PR impact, but an impact which can actually save lives, which can make society a better place. Now I could show you a code which I have written, but that's for later. In last four months, I have met three prime ministers and they challenged me on the hypothesis of robotics because they think robotics will take away jobs. And I challenged them back that if the definition of employment is just to earn bread, butter, and maybe earn enough to rent a particular house, then I seriously challenge that definition of employment, more so in India, which glorifies services industry. And this is my hypothesis. If you actually go to any services industry today, any services industry, airlines, airports, healthcare, telecom, DPOs, your fundamental view, if you really want to see, you will see age group of 19 years to 26 years old people pressing four to 17 buttons for 8.25 hours. If that is the definition of employment, then I totally disagree with that. That kind of definition of employment will result in an arthritis of right or left hand when they are 34 years of age and muscle memory only. So I seriously challenge that. Hence my hypothesis that industrialization and mechanization using intelligent machines is going to happen. And if that is going to happen, and if you compare that with the invent of a mobile device, which is a mobile phone, then there would be more machines than humans. And if that is going to happen, we need to talk about a language, a universal language, which they can also understand and we can interact with them. And that's my premises. My third patent is a blockchain, intelligent blockchain patent. I think countries or democracies like India, they have this huge opportunity to give voice to each and every citizen of this young country. Not great now, not great yet, but this country. And they can do that by preserving the integrity of their rights and how they communicate their rights by combining AI and blockchain. Vote cannot be the only mechanism or definition of democracy. Each and every person who have their view and they have represented their view either through a vote or through a referendum or anything related to that, that should be recorded, that should be highlighted, that should be visible. And the second part is that it takes humongous time for Indians to do trade outside of this particular country and vice versa by giving that particular transparency, even if a cost of exposing and making corruption transparent, it's still good for trade. 
but combining AI and blockchain is something which is very, very important and will emerge and will be one of the differentiator between a great democracy and a democracy. So these are my three basic use cases using AI and communication is an undercurrent. And I'll go a little bit deeper. It will be Greek for a few of you guys. I'll tell you, I'll explain you how I am doing it and how other companies who are trying to find out this great, great adventure of getting into an internet and finding out customers and acquiring those customers. Finding out those customers also from a marketing perspective that who are unhappy with their competitors and how to make them happy. Also, finding out existing customers, okay, who are extremely happy with them, but will be unhappy in future. And that is done, and that is possible, just by writing less than 200 lines of code. It's a Python code. So I'm just exposing my paper, it is in public view. Fundamentally, when we write code, or when we think about AI, we actually talk a lot. But most often than not, we work on a predefined set of data. This is our view of customer. These are the attributes of customer. This is what we want to communicate. And we rarely want to find out, hey, does this customer even wants to talk with me? And if that customer is talking to me, do, am I really engaging that particular person? If I'm engaging that particular person, how I'm engaging that? Is that person angry? Is that person happy? Is that person suffocated? Is that person even getting the point which I'm trying to make? And all happens in the background of digital communication. Hence, most chief marketing officers, when they actually go for their communication budgets or customer acquisition budgets, they are not able to quantify or justify to their CEOs. And most of them are not able to meet their targets because it's a very difficult thing to do in a very subjective way. And my hypothesis is you can actually write a code. It's a patent. It's a patent I have sold. It has given me some wealth. And it's a simple patent which actually reads through the code, has a simple machine learning with an accuracy of 89% and basically tells you few simple aspects. What this person is talking about, is it good for you? Is his or her intentions related to your product? For example, if a person is wearing, is continuously going to a Brooks brother and wearing a Brooks brother suit and he drinks Starbucks, is it relevant to your brand? Is that your prospective customer? He may have never heard the name of your product. Is he even relevant to you? If he's relevant to you, can you engage him in a conversation which he's already started? Because internet is actually a source and a, an ocean of all this communication. That's the premise. Entrepreneurs like you should basically encourage more. Now, how to do it? This is a little bit Greek, but you know, only way to do this is basically to combine AI with mathematics. That means for each emotional set, you basically create mathematical vectors and those vectors create this intelligence and give you exact prescription what kind of communication you need to do, okay? and it's an easy code to write. The silly thing is, and the sexy thing is that it's an easy code to write. Thinking is a difficult thing. I'm just putting my credibility over here. This is something which I've given to three governments, and it's a framework of blockchain and AI, how citizen services should be improved, what citizens are thinking, and so on and so forth. And the idea is to bring these five changes in use direct them. The end part is that which everyone forgets when you talk about communication, and especially communication in India and Africa, is internet is not everywhere because it is expensive. This is the satellite, which was the last satellite VSAT which we built. It actually cost you 55,000. It's there in the remote areas. So build something locally. I encourage you guys, whosoever are entrepreneurs, to build something locally and then induce your communication because your real market is outside of cities. Now before practical realities hit, make your mark. Do something very specific for India. I strongly encourage people not to buy softwares from others, especially from other countries, because most of them are not valid for here. So please make your mark, induce AI, build companies, create mass entrepreneurship. It's a very powerful technology, which is being just going in a nascent stage. It can be a huge advantage for you guys. Thank you, thank you for listening to me, thank you.